Hello everyone and welcome back to another 1.20 Let's Play video. In this video, I'm going to be taking on the insane challenge of building something every day for a month. Well, almost. We're going to be transforming this snowy island into a beautiful, fully-fledged village. This video took me an incredible amount of time to finish, so I appreciate any support you're willing to give. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I plan on building a winter village complete with a little town square, maybe a shopping center, and plenty of cute residential cabins. But first things first, we have to figure out where we're going to build this village. And originally I was thinking about building it right here on top of this snowy mountain because obviously the winter village has to be built in the snow. However, do I really want a Christmas village right next to my base forever and always? Not really, because it doesn't really fit the vibe of my base. So that being said, in our camel episode, we found a snowy taiga so far away. However, I feel like that would be the perfect place to place a little winter village. So that is actually where I am headed. And I brought all of my maps to hopefully fill them a little bit along the way, but I have no idea what map I should be looking at. I guess we'll start with this one because I'm pretty sure the snowy taiga is this way. I also plan on linking this to the nether because I don't wanna have to fly here every time that I want to work on my village. And especially with a limited number of rockets, we're going to have to find find an easier way to get here. So I guess that means I have a very long flight ahead of me. Ooh, I see ice. Okay, we must be getting closer. Whoa, here's actually an island. It's a snowy taiga island surrounded by a frozen river. What if we transform this island? That would be so cool. Okay, maybe we will do that. I like that plan. So we need to go ahead and place down our little nether portal. Is that big enough? Yes. Let's light it and hop into the nether, my favorite place. In the nether, I moved the portal up to Y111, made my way over to my base's nether portal, and nearly died in the process. chest plate oh my gosh my heart is racing i think that i was starting to get just a wee bit careless gosh i hate hoglins i hate the nether anyways i'm literally shaking so hard right now but back to building this stupid nether highway we made it here is my main hallway and why is there a stupid enderman here wow such an easy way to get to the winter village right so scenic well with that task out of the way let's go ahead and start planning this village i'm going to grab some wool so that i can sketch out some builds and other ideas for the village and then i want to create almost a little second base over there because I'm going to be spending a lot of time. So let's go ahead and grab plenty of wood. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to need, but I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. We'll grab a bit of cobblestone and probably just regular stone as well. I can imagine I'm going to want some mossy variants, so let's grab some moss and we'll go ahead and make just a few more shulker boxes. Let's bring coal for campfires and buy some lanterns from the villagers. I went ahead and and gathered some other miscellaneous decorational blocks and I'm definitely going to have to come back and restock and that's totally okay. That's why we made the nether highway system in the first place. And of course, eventually I will put ice there so that it's even more effective. Now it's time to head back on over to the nether and start planning this village. Wait just a second, there's an igloo here. That's so cool. Oh, and it even has a little down thing. Whoa, that's so neat. And foxes! Whoa, this is the perfect island. I love this. Where did they go? 
They're so cute. We definitely had to make a little fox enclosure. And so we move to the real beginning of this challenge with day one. It only makes sense to start with a cabin as we'll be building a variety of them throughout this challenge. I do have a long play of this particular build if you'd like to check it out. And also peep the cow that's just hanging around on top of my build. But with this cabin finished, we're brought to day two. Now that day one's build is out of the way, it's time to start working on day two. So today we are going to be building a little town square. I figured that'd be perfect because I imagine that a lot of builds are going to surround this town square. So I want to go ahead and get it in. Though I do need to kind of make a little sheep pen first just because we're going to be using so much wool in this village and it'd be really nice to have some kind of way to get wool while I'm working on this project. I want to check out this village over here and see if there are any sheep. Are there any sheep in snowy biomes? I'm honestly not sure. So far, I'm not seeing any, so hopefully the village has some. Oh, I see a black and a gray sheep. Okay, perfect. So sorry, villagers, but I need these sheep more than you do. In you go, and we'll just re-dye them the colors that I want, and then go ahead and shear them. So for this town square, I'm going to want to place a big Christmas tree right in the center, and then also some little string lights with some banners hanging on them and a couple of little market stalls. Let's remove this red wool and go ahead and start building this town square. I started off with outlining the square and filling that in. For the tree, I just built a big version of a spruce tree and placed a wool throughout for the ornaments and a glowstone star on top. We have the string lights I mentioned with banners and lanterns. And lastly, time to add those market stalls. Since I didn't have a lot of space to work with, I went with this diagonal design and I think it turned out really good. So what do we think about the town square? Look at this Christmas tree, isn't it so cute? I've never built a Christmas tree in Minecraft before and I don't know why because this is adorable. And also I love these tiny little diagonal market stalls. I definitely will be using this design again in the future. But for the Christmas tree, we have some glow lichen sprinkled around so that we get a subtle glow from the tree and even a little star on top. For the ornaments, we just have some colored wool. Around back, I added this string of banners with some lanterns on it and then just some little rose bushes for an additional pop of color. So there we go, day two is done. Things have started to get very messy and it's only day three. This definitely will not work for us long term. Oh my goodness, I think this is like the third group of pillagers or something. See, we already have a little crossbow here. I've killed many before. I will just try to avoid them, I guess, and see how that works, even though that is where the next build is going to go. I, I don't think that's gonna go well, actually. Well, in that case, I guess we better take them out. Come on, get your friend. Thank you. Anyways, now that that is out of the way, let's start clearing out a bit of land for this next build. Ooh, and it's snowing. I love when it snows over here. For day three's build, I want to build a townhouse and I'm kind of thinking of the top floor being the home of the shopkeeper and then the bottom floor being the actual shop. And it's going to go right here outside of the town square. So let's go ahead and lay out all of our materials and we'll put this here. We'll start by mapping it out. From here, we will separate the build so that we have three different spaces. We'll have the bottom half of the build be a mixture of stone bricks and also granite. But you know how sometimes, at least the houses where I live, in order for them to cut down on costs, they will make the front really pretty and have it be all bricked out. And then around the sides, they just go to a cheaper resource. Well, I'm going to literally do the same thing here in the front, I'm going to, of course, do the brick and granite. And then around the sides, we're just going to do wood because brick 
is expensive. And then the top will be a completely different kind of block altogether, just so that we can have that nice separation between the shops and the homes. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't think that I'm going to do the interior of this build because it is going to take me a lot of time and I don't have a lot of time today. So I'm going to skip out on the interior and I definitely see myself doing that a lot more down the line because this is quite the challenge, building every day. So I will definitely allow myself that luxury of skipping out on interiors if I need to. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the rest of this build in. Look how precious these townhouses are. I love them so much. And I think my favorite part, um, hello Enderman, he just interrupted me. But anyways, I think my favorite part is this granite and brick bottom. It just is so charming. I added these half slab pathways so that whenever it snows, we still have clear paths and not everything is just covered in snow. And we have some little flower pots and hanging signs with nothing on them. And then little banners as festive decorations around the sides, we just have some windows and honestly it's kind of boring over here but it's fine it gets the job done but since i'm not going to do the interiors i have literally no intention of doing them at all i have a little trick i want to try instead i got this idea from brooke ella here on youtube so full credit to her but in a lot of her builds behind the windows she'll add like redstone lamps or just some kind of light block so that it looks like the house is lit from within but now that i'm thinking about it maybe redstone lamps would look a little bit better than the glowstone and i definitely don't have redstone dust here with me in the winter village so whenever i go back over to my base at some point i'm sure i will here soon but whenever i go back over there i'll get some redstone and we can replace these with redstone lamps just so that whenever we look through the windows we don't just see an empty room we see a little bit of light but i will get to that as soon as i get a bit of redstone though this is going to be the end of day three so let's go ahead and move on to day four I've had to go back to my base to gather more materials many a times during this challenge and it's only day four so i can imagine that we're going to have to keep on going back to the base over and over again to gather materials honestly that's one of the hardest things about this challenge is just the amount of materials that you have to gather anyways moving on to day four's project this little sheet pin is doing lovely however wouldn't it be nice if we had a little structure or something in the village to house the sheep so that being said i figured that we would build a little banner shop because we are definitely using lots of banners and lots of wool in this village so obviously all of these little villagers are going to have to get the banner somehow so let's build a banner shop and it's going to go right here and we are going to make this build just a bit smaller because I need to pace myself throughout this challenge if I want to finish it. And I'm saying that at day four, so maybe that's not a good sign, but I'm gonna finish it, it'll be fine. So we'll start off by laying our stone bricks and it always helps me to go ahead and get those pillars in as well. Look how cute and little it's gonna be. Next step is to pillar up with all of the spruce logs. I want the walls to be mangrove and we'll sprinkle in a little bit of strip mangrove log just to add a bit more texture. I think in order to make this a little bit easier on myself, I want to go ahead and start with the roof. So we're going to be doing a dark oak trim just like we've done on the townhouse and then also this little cabin over here actually. And it does blend really weird right there, but I have a plan that's going to kind of hide that and make it look a little bit better. And to do that, we're going to add a little wool roof kind of like we have over there at the townhouses. A banner shop wouldn't be complete without some banners, of course. We still have a lot more work to do, obviously, but that is going to be the outline of the build mostly. So I am going to go ahead and skip to a little time lapse because if I commentated through every single build during this challenge, this video would be like two hours long. So let's jump on into the time lapse. All right, little sheepies, it is now your time to come with me. First, let's just get rid of this fence, of course. 
Look how cute they are. They're also colorful too. And here is your new home. They definitely complete this build, but I am very happy with how it turned out. I added lots of little details around it since it is a small build. I feel like with smaller builds, it's more fun, honestly, to add details. And it's really easy to and makes such a big impact. But I do want to do that light trick that I was talking about for day three. So let me go over to my base and get some redstone. Maybe by the end of this challenge, I'll add an ice word here or something because I've definitely traveled down it maybe like, I don't know, 20 times and it literally takes so long. Also, may I note 20 times and it's only day four. Now let's see how much redstone we have. Oh, I think we have plenty, cool. And back we go. I just used every single piece of redstone I own. These are actually kind of expensive, but we're also going to have to power them. So we can just do it like that with levers and let's see if that looks better than the glowstone. Okay, that looks so much better than the glowstone. It's a lot more subtle, I think. So. We'll just do that on at least all of the front facing windows, I think, since these are fairly expensive and I have no more redstone. And then maybe up there too. This also feels very Winter Village-esque. You know those Winter Village figurines? Those little buildings don't have interiors either. They just have lights in the windows. So it's kind of like that. Honestly, this is just like a massive dollhouse or something. I'm also going to do the same thing in our new build, at least on this front one. But with that, that is the end of day four. Now on to day five. Day five through eight, I wasn't able to commentate in real time. So instead, I'll just talk through the builds now. First up, for day five and six, we have some more cabins. I'm slowly filling out the residential side of the island and eventually we'll have a bunch of cabins. Day five's cabin was pretty simple, but for day six, I decided to do an A-frame one. This is probably my favorite cabin of the village as it's so different than any other build. I even did the interior since it's pretty open and therefore you can see everything. We have a fireplace with a living room setup, a bed, obviously some bookshelves, and a little kitchen. For day seven, I swear I commentated this build, but I can't find the footage anywhere, but alas. I decided to go for a coffee shop. We have some brick on the left with a wool roof and a diagonal entrance to spice things up a little bit. For day eight, I added a bakery to the village. It's pretty simple, but I tried to add some unique details to it to change things up like this striped roof, a hanging sign, and of course a display window with a cake. It is now day eight and we've made a lot of progress so far in this little village, but today I would like to work on the nether portal. I do use the portal all the time, so I want it to be a point of interest in the village. And I also want it to be ice and snow themed to match the winter vibes. So that being said, we need to go collect some ice and some snow, but not from just right here because I don't want to destroy the beautiful land around me. So let's go a little ways away. I think there's an ice spikes biome over that way, but I just need to find my elytra, which is right here in this chest. Still have yet to make a gunpowder farm, but I will get to that at some point, I assume. Ooh, yeah, look at all this ice. This will be perfect. And ooh, look at this room portal. That's so cool. But we need a little bit of packed ice in particular. But look how cool this little icy area is. All these little spiky ice bits. They're so cute. Now that we are a bit of ways from the village, let's start collecting ice. And we'll need a bit of snow. I also forgot that I am going to need some obsidian too because I want to make the portal a little bit bigger and I saw a lava lake right there. I just need to get a bucket first. Wow, look at the cute snowy village from the sky. It's definitely coming along. We have a bucket, a little bit of water, and now we can make a bit of obsidian. Now that I have everything collected, I can go ahead and start working on this portal as soon as I clean up my mess. I think for day nine, I might build, wait, today's day nine. 
I think for day 10, I might build myself a little storage barn so that we can have a proper organized storage on this island. And it's snowing now, how pretty. I have been spending a lot of time here, so I think it would make my life. Why did that cow scare me so bad? I have been spending a lot of time here, so I think it'd be worthwhile to build myself a little storage barn. In the meantime though, I think I might just like stick my storage inside of this cabin that I have not furnished. Stuff is cleared, and the first thing that I'm going to do is reshape the nether portal. I'm going to make it an odd number of dimensions just because I feel like you have a little bit more flexibility and options whenever you're building on an odd number. I'm not sure why that is but it kind of just works that way so we'll do this wide instead i'm not gonna make it much bigger just a little bit bigger maybe seven tall it looks a little bit better and from here i kind of just want to encase it in ice think nether portal in like that icy mountain over there but much smaller i know it looks weird right now but we're just going to trust the process here's the rough shape of it we will definitely go in and detail it a little bit more i'm thinking some diorite and then of course snow i'm kind of getting emo boy vibes from it you know what i mean with like the swoopy bangs maybe it's just me but focusing on the top part of all the ice, I'm just going to add a little bit of snow. And lastly, to break up some of the snow and also ice, I just want to add a bit of diorite. Maybe it's like a rocky snow or like a little muddy, dirty snow. Wouldn't it be so cool if we had like ice stairs or something or just like different kinds of ice blocks. I think that'd be so neat. I actually think this is pretty neat and I think it's going to look so cool once we light it up, but I do want to do that very last just as a little treat. Next, for some icicles, I want to hang some of these end rods. Honestly, I think we'll just do the two, but they kind of remind me of icicles and I've been really wanting to hang them around the builds, but I just keep on forgetting to do so. Kind of just like on the roof or something. And and I also don't really have a good source of end rods, so that's also a problem. Next, I do want to add a little pathway to this place, and I think I'm just going to do it with snow. I feel like dirt would be weird, wood would be a little bit weird. I think snow will be perfect. And hello, little squid. That way we can properly walk here instead of sliding around all the time. For some lighting, I'm going to place some diorite walls around, and we can go ahead and place some end rods on top top of them and we will get a little bit of melting ice but all we have to do is replace the regular ice with packed ice and it actually won't melt that way i had no idea but i think that's so cool so the packed ice is a little bit more resilient than the regular ice and actually we just need to do it in this little shape like that now i had an idea to plant some pitcher plants and unfortunately we can't just do it straight on the snow so how would i do this like wouldn't these look so cool they give such winter wonderland plant vibes i think it's definitely not ideal but maybe i'll just place down a bit of coarse dirt and do it like that i don't too much want it to show but how else am i gonna do it unless we just like covered it in snow like that or something wouldn't it be so cool if minecraft made ice and snow with specific plants i think that'd be so neat they definitely need to do that. Ooh, look at it at nighttime. It's so lit up. Oh wait, this is the perfect time to light it, don't you think? But imagine if I could like plant flowers on top of it. That would look so cool. I really wish I could. Well, let's do a little light of the portal and look how neat this is. I'm so happy. Or what if we could change the color of the portal? So instead of it being purple, what if we could kind of like a beacon light? You could change the color of that. What if I can make it light blue or something? Look at me getting all these little ideas. But I honestly think that'll be it for this day. It's nice having just chill, quick and easy days. So I guess I'll see you all tomorrow for me and a plus second for you for day 10. I'm actually quite excited for today's build, but first I just need to gather a little bit of snow. Whoa, you can craft snow layers. I had no idea, that's so cool. I wanted the snow because I actually want to build the roof of the little storage barn out of snow. Just so that we are able to have a little bit of variation in block size rather than a full block size, we'll be using some of this smooth quartz and it kind of looks like dirty snow, definitely not perfect, 
but it's kind of the best that we have in Minecraft. Maybe one day we will get snow slabs and stairs, but today is not that day. Now to get into the build, I think that I want to build it back here towards the end of the island, and it's just going to be a fairly simple barn design. I'm getting a lot of inspiration from my barn that I built over in Castaways, especially since I wasn't able to actually use that barn for very long. Might as well bring it over here in my survival world. And of course, we have to make it pink. Looks like we have ourselves a pillager patrol. I actually haven't seen those guys in quite a while. A few days, definitely. Hopefully, they just stay over there and ignore me, though they are very interested in me right now. Just keep on patrolling. Ignore me. I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. Or better yet, there's a village right over there. So just walk a few blocks behind you. I think that you're more welcome there. For the trim of the roof, we'll do a little bit of spruce. Barns are maybe one of my favorite things to build in Minecraft because the roof shapes are just so much fun to do. So we started with a staircase, went up with some slabs, added another staircase, and then finished with slabs. And I don't know, it's just like such a fun design. I feel like you can change up the look of your build so much with just adding a different variety of staircases, slabs, and planks to your roof. It just gives it such a different shape depending on which combination you do. Like for example, with the bakery, we have some staircases going to some full planks and then more staircases and it gives it this kind of like sharp but then a tall in the middle roof shape. Of course with the townhouses we just have regular staircases and that gives it that classic roof shape. And then with the coffee shop we just have regular slabs and it gives it such a different look. I didn't add any staircases or full blocks and it just looks so different. Honestly all of my builds are very very simple shapes. I think it's just the roof that gives it a little bit more pizzazz and kind of sets the builds apart from one another. Now to fill in the roof, I went ahead and cut the quartz into slabs. So we'll kind of have like an alternating slab and then snow roof, depending on what block we have on the trim. So whenever we have a bottom slab, we will do the quartz. And then whenever we have a full block, we will do the snow. For the staircases, I'm going to do half slabs, some more quartz, and then to finish off the middle, we'll just add a bunch of snow. kind of gives it that snowy roof feel a little bit. At least that's what I was going for. I know it's not perfect. And with the roof finish, let's go ahead and get the rest of the build in. And there she is, very simple, but I do like how it turned out. And of course we have our snowy roof there. I like all of the details that I was able to put into it. I just think smaller builds are so much easier to detail and make the details look really nice. But now it's time to work on the interior. So of course this is a storage barn. So we are going to be adding storage everywhere. To add a little bit of pizzazz, if you will, I want to put these chiseled bookshelves on the ground. Look how cool that looks. I really want to use this as a floor or at least like a floor detail more often. I kind of always just forget that they exist. But then from there, we're just going to put a little item frame on it. Just gives it a little bit more something something. For now, we'll only do two rows of double chests since I'm not going to be in this winter village forever. As soon as I'm done with it, I'll probably never come back here. So I don't think we need too much storage. But to bring the snowy roof inside, I want to add a white rug just to kind of tie everything together and also break up the oak floor a little bit. Now this wall is starting to look really bare and one thing that I love to add to the interiors of my builds, especially if I have a lot of space to fill, is just some little shelves. So we'll just build it out of some spruce trapdoors. And then you just have to work with different ways of placing the trapdoors so that you can actually fit stuff on the shelf. So maybe we place a trapdoor like this so we're able to fit something underneath it. And then maybe something like this and we can place a flower pot on top of the crafting table. 
We'll place a chest here and maybe a lantern here. And there is our cute shelf. Isn't that so fun? And lastly, since I will be spending a lot of time probably in the storage building, I just want to place a bed down. And all you have to do to use the bed is just break one carpet and then you can just use it. That way we don't have an ugly bed just laid out in the middle of nowhere. And that will about do it for our adorable little storage barn. Definitely let me know what you think about it. But I will see you all tomorrow for day 11. Wow, we're making our way through this challenge. Challenge. Oh yeah, and now I have to move everything over to the storage barn. For day 11, I wanted to build that fox enclosure that I mentioned before. So I started with a little custom snowy cave for the foxes to sleep in, and then I tried to build a natural barrier to keep the foxes in. Foxes love sweet berries, so I had to add a couple of sweet berry patches around. Now all we need to do is find this little fox, and okay, he's right here. If I were thinking, I would have brought a lead, but why would I do that? Instead, I'm just going to try to chase him into his new enclosure. We're almost there, almost there, just gotta steer clear of those pillagers. Oh, he's walking towards the pillagers, please don't do that. Well, I guess he's left me with no other choice other than than to take care of the pillagers. And there you are, just waiting so patiently. Let's not run into the plains, please. Back over to the island. Okay, just trying to drown, are we? Oh, what is he doing? I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. Okay, he's just hopping around. Can we go this way, please? Is he trying to bury his block of dirt? Okay, go across, go across. Go, 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 go. Push, push. You know, I think I might have to go to my base and get a lead, this isn't gonna work. We were so close, but he just refuses to get on this little frozen river again. Honestly, if I just would have went to get a lead in the first place, then he probably would have already been in the enclosure. I'm just wasting time. I am back with the lead. Little fox, where are you at? Oh, there he is with his little block of dirt in his mouth. That's so cute. Now I just had to get close enough to actually put him on the lead. And there we are. Come with me, little one. Welcome to your new home. Hopefully he doesn't jump out. I guess we will find out though because he was definitely jumping all over the place whenever I was chasing him. So he can't jump high. Oh look and he just traded his block of dirt for a little berry. So cute. I planted so many sweet berries just for you. Now I want to take a little peek and see if I can find another one maybe over there in this taiga because if I could breed them and make little fox babies that would be amazing. Oh my gosh look at the little baby puppy no fox yet but we do have lots of little wolves around here baby pig so many cute little baby animals finally i found a fox oh and it has a baby no way it's so cute will the wolves eat the foxes i have no idea Okay, I have the baby. Come on, mama. Okay, we have both foxes, yay. I'm quite a ways from the winter village, unfortunately, but we have two foxes in tow and one of them is a baby. And home sweet home, we have made it with both foxes and the other fox is still in here too. So we can go ahead and do a little breed of them. Another baby? So cute, a little fox family. But this is slightly scaring me, so I think I might just get rid of it. But I think they love it here. I'm so happy with how this fox enclosure turned out. So I still have about two weeks left to do this project. And I feel like our town is starting to get pretty full. It's definitely not fully finished by any means, but it's starting to get pretty filled out. So I just wanna pace myself and make sure that I don't finish this island before the challenge is over. I don't think that should be too difficult, but I am just being aware of the size of the island. That being said, over here in the corner, I want to build an icy tower. I'm not sure why I want to do it other than I'm really enjoying building with ice and snow. They're such fun blocks to build. And I think at some point I want to build an ice castle back over at my base but now is not the time for that in the meantime we'll just build a little ice tower
I want the base of this build to be a bit rugged and kind of like it's jutting out of a rock formation or something like that. At least that's what I'm going for. I may not be able to achieve that perfectly, but that's the vibe. So we'll start with a shape like this and then kind of just build it up in a random kind of order. I'm not really going to put too much thought into this. Just so that I don't lose the shape of the actual tower, let's go ahead and just mark that out and then we can continue to build up this little rocky bit. I'm getting some slabs and also staircases is really going to help just make this look a lot more natural, I think. And last but not least, it's mossy time. honestly i think this is looking pretty good now to finish the rest of it With the ice tower finished, that brings us to day 13 with yet another cabin. This one was actually inspired by the cabin that my partner and I go to every year. It's a fairly simple build, but I'm happy that I've been able to come up with four unique cabins that are all pretty much rectangle shaped. But with this cabin finished, we only need to build one more to finish out this residential area. So for day 14, we're going to do just that. I think this is my smallest cabin yet, but I love to build small builds because I find them so much fun to detail since anything that you add to the build makes such a big impact. little residential area over here may be finished we have one two three four five cabins and pretty much all of the space is filled up we do have a little bit of space up here and then this open space over here which i'm not quite sure what i will fill them with quite yet but it might be a cabin or it might be a little shop or something but that being said this side of the island is nearly finished it's really just this side that i need to work on we have a lot of empty space over here behind the banner shop and the coffee shop all of this needs to be filled out so we definitely do have more space we're doing good things are going well and the foxes are literally so cute they actually sleep inside of their little hut look at them just a pile of foxes isn't that the cutest little thing you've ever seen i just can't believe they actually sleep over there like that's so cool so over here i was thinking about just adding some more shops because i'm kind of getting bored of building cabins i feel like building shops is a little bit more interesting so i think we will start with a shop over here pretty much right behind the banner shop and the coffee shop i just need to flatten out the land a little bit clear out the trees so the build that i have planned is actually a little pet shop the foxes kind of inspired me to do this this, and then also we saw the wolves a bit ago so I just feel like a little pet shop would be perfect to build and I do plan on doing a little bit of an interior with this one just because I want to fill it with animals that sounds like a lot of fun though since this build is on a bit of a hill I kind of need to flatten it out just a little bit All right, this is looking a little bit better. So I'm going to build up this brick a little bit and we'll have a cute little window at the front so that you can see the animals. And then on this side of the build, I do plan on having a second story with cherry wood, kind of bringing it back to our townhouse vibes over that way. Also that Mason's trading hall is doing wonders for this village because I get as much brick as I could possibly want which is so nice so let me go ahead and get the rest of this build in and then we can jump in together and get the little animals in here and now 
we have ourselves a finished pet shop. I added some glow lichen on the brick just to make it look a little bit more worn down and I really like that detail. We have some banners of course and lots of little flower boxes and just other little bits and bobs around. I do need to write pet shop here on this sign and I need to get some hearts in there or something don't I wait look how cute the sign is we're definitely doing this little cat face that's so fun oh and I did do the interior a little bit so we have a little cage here and a cage here for two pets and then maybe at some point we can put a bird here I imagine this is like a little bird cage or something but of course we have to go get the pets so I want to get some fish first so that we're able to tame a cat and then i have some bones here in my inventory to tame a wolf and i believe this is going to be the very first wolf and cat that i tame which is just crazy so right over here we should be able to get plenty of fish So we'll go over here to this village right behind our village and mine's better just saying and hopefully we can find a cat oh hello village polar bear second village polar bear oh wait we also have rabbits backup plan if i can't find a cat then we can add rabbits to the little pen because so far i'm not seeing any cats oh i found a cat and it's a jelly cat Whoa, that's probably the best one. Honestly, why is taming cats the hardest thing? Please eat the fish. Oh, yay, we have a kitty. Follow me, let's go to the pet shop. Now we just have to get you in here. Oh, it's gonna go, okay, it's in. Oh, and we have to make it sit, of course. And there we go, we have one pet in the pet shop. Now to find a wolf friend. I found some wolves, come over here, please. Which one do we want? They all look exactly the same, so it shouldn't be a difficult decision. I guess we'll go with you. Oh, wow, so fast, you only wanted one bone. And now off we go to the pet store. Welcome home, little pup. Now you just need to get inside of the little cage and in you go now we have a little kitty and a little puppy and our pet shop is complete oh and we are officially over two weeks into the challenge i'm actually a little bit excited for this to be over because it has definitely been a bit difficult but i guess i'll see you all tomorrow for day 16. Day 16, I was thinking that we could continue to expand this smaller shopping district over here and I would like to build a blacksmith today because every village needs a blacksmith. So of course we have to start off with chopping some trees and clearing out the land. As per usual, I am going to have to replant some trees because I've chopped down so many. I want this build to have lots of stone so we'll start off with some stone walls and spruce pillars. For the roof, we will do a dark oak trim and it's going to be a fairly high roof too. To fill in the roof, let's use some mangrove and sometimes I like to make it where my roof trim kind of pokes out a little bit so the roof isn't completely flush with the trim like so, so we can see that the staircase kind of is not flat with the roof like I have over there with the pet store. I don't know, it just adds a little bit more variation. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But in this case, I figured that I would do it. That is looking like a pretty snazzy square, if you ask me. We just need to detail the square a little bit more. I could definitely leave the build just like this but it doesn't really feel like a blacksmith to me so in order to make it feel more blacksmith-esque i want to add a little outdoor workshop right over here you just can't have a blacksmith without a wee little outdoor work area a 
it's not like you can literally see anything at all, but the build is pretty much done. The snow kind of ruins the final product just a little bit. We of course have the side bit over here, which I think turned out super cute and cozy. And we have a view of the fox enclosure. I love to be working at this blacksmith, honestly. I just can't believe I've done all of this and I've done it every single day of December so far. It has been so difficult, but enough of that. I will see you all tomorrow for day 17. I'm sorry, but look at that tree. Why does it look like that? It's so small and pathetic. I said yesterday that I think that I might want to build a flower shop, and that is exactly what we are going to build today, a little flower shop, because a lot of my builds have little flower pots, flowers on them and you know just bushes and stuff so of course we have to have a florist who provides the flowers for the shopkeepers and the people who live here and a florist who does the landscaping around here we're somehow going to awkwardly build it here on this slope i'm beginning to run out of flat space to build things and i'm getting inspiration from our coffee shop that we built so we're going to play with that little diagonal entrance again whenever i'm building on ground that isn't just one level i like to get a floor in the build pretty early on just so that i can see what shape we're working with and this is definitely a very weird shape but i'm not going to do the interior anyway so it's fine so on this side i'm thinking about making this more of a greenhouse or maybe like the shopping floor or like the sales floor where the flowers will be on display. That's kind of the idea anyway, so we'll put a lot of glass in here. In kind of this like fun bay window style. This is the most building I've ever done in Minecraft. Typically, I will have one project and one build for one video, but Obviously, I'm doing so many builds just in this one video. It is so much building. It has been quite the experience for sure for me. We won't do anything special for the roof here. You've seen it before. We're kind of just doing that same flat style roof that we've done here. And then also on the coffee shop a little bit. And then I think a little bit on the banner shop. Honestly, I feel like you can get away with doing very similar builds in a project like this because you don't want them to be too different. You want them to all feel like maybe they're built by the same architect. Is that what those people are called? I'm honestly not sure. By the same little builder person, you know? So I don't feel too bad about copying similar styles and roofs and honestly just builds in general. Of course though, we will always do some kind of difference in them. Different blocks, different colors, and just slightly different shapes. And in case you're wondering about my building process, I of course build this all in a creative world first because I just like to plan builds in creative worlds. It just saves a lot of time in the long run. So I have an identical island over in a creative world. Of course, I don't completely finish the world over there in that creative world because that would be truly insane. But I do have most of them half built. Now on these little strips versus logs that come out. Of course, we'll have to add a sign and I'll put something on it here in a second. But I want to do some of these hanging pots because it's a flower shop. It just makes so much sense. And I always forget about doing these, but they're so fun and they're so cute. So I think that we'll just do them on all of these little things. See, again, this build is very, very similar to our coffee shop, but just these little details make it different. So over here on the side, we will do our entrance. So we'll place some cherry doors like so. And then I want to add some windows and you kind of have to do these full glass blocks whenever you're adding windows to a little diagonal build. And she's nearly done. We just need to do a bit more detailing. I want to add a window to the back and then also texture the brick. There's a little window. And to texture the brick, we just need a little bit of glow lichen that I'll just farm right over here. And of course, we'll sprinkle some granite. I can't have brick in my build without a little bit of granite. 
It just looks so good and it breaks it up so nicely. I love building with granite, honestly. My favorite part of doing these shops is always these signs. They're just so much fun and I love to paste cute little things on it. Like I did these little triangles for the blacksmith and then of course the kitty for the pet shop. And we had the little like coffee for the coffee shop. And for the flower shop, of course, we had to do some flowers. Just look how cute, I love it. Now, one last thing, I don't really plan on doing any interior, but I do want to place some little flower pots here just so that you can see them through the window. Oh, it's so cute, I love that. Last but not least, we just need a few bushes and of course some sweet berries bushes. I plan on doing the pathways to all the shops soon and it kind of looks like we have a little square or something that we can put here. Maybe a second Christmas tree, maybe a little bit of a smaller one or maybe something else festive here in the center. But that pretty much does it for day 17 I think it is. So I'll see you all tomorrow for day 18. As I've been planning this village, I've really tried to envision how the villagers would live their lives and how they would get the stuff that they need. For example, like this banner shop over here, a lot of my builds have banners on them. So of course we had to have a shop to supply the banners. Oh, hello, Barnoon Trader. I think this is the first time I've seen one. That's cool. I don't, oh. Um, your llama is not okay. Anyways, the flower shop that we built yesterday, I was thinking about the fact that a lot of my builds have just little landscaping bits around, bushes and flower pots. So of course we had to have a shop to supply the landscaping and flowers. But one thing that we don't quite have yet is food. These villagers are going to need some kind of food to survive. The bakery is going to need food to make their baked goods. The coffee shop is going to need some kind of food to make their coffee and such. So I think today I want to build a farmhouse and we will also have a bunch of farmland too. And I do think I would just slightly cheat just a little bit because I'm going to be building it off of the snowy island right over here. Just because I imagine that a farmer would live outside of town because obviously farmland needs a lot of space. So we'll build it right here. I've of course already planned this farmhouse and honestly, I think this is going to be one of my favorite farmhouses I've ever built. It's so fun and unique and I'm so excited to get it in. Also, so this is a beach, I guess, so probably not the best place to grow crops, but you know, we're going to make it work. And I do also think that I'm going to do the farmland tomorrow as its own day, just to give myself a little bit of a break. This challenge is, of course, a little bit tricky, a little bit challenging. Imagine that, a challenge being challenging. So it'll be nice to have a change of pace and not doing an actual build, but rather just planting some crops. Well, we gotta get the blueprint of the build in first, of course, and this is what we are looking at. So we're going to have this little rounded bit over here, and it's going to be, I'm thinking like kind of Victorian style. You know how Victorian style builds usually have like a little circular part of the house. That's kind of the inspiration behind that. And then we'll have a little porch here at the front. I don't think that I'm going to talk through this build too much today, just because again, if I did talk through every single build, this video would be like 10 hours long or something. So that being said, let's go ahead and get the rest of this build in. <music> in it's time to plant some farmland for day 19. Of course I had to switch the sand with some dirt since this is a beach and I decided to plant beetroot. I put lanterns on top of the water sources so that the water doesn't freeze. Next I needed to connect the farmhouse to the island so I made a snowy pathway lined with some of those string lights that I have up in the town square to keep everything on theme. And I think everything came together really nicely. 
it is now day 20 and I can't believe we only have five more days left to build in this village. It has been quite the journey, but today we are going to fill in this empty space with a library. Also look how cute the farmhouse looks with the little beetroot field, the sunflowers, and this little festive pathway. I love how this all turned out. I believe this will be our very last shop build of the village, which is just crazy. I've just been doing this for so long that like, I just never thought it was gonna end, you know? But here we are approaching the end. I want to switch things up just a little bit with this build. So we're going to go for this rounded square shape, if that is what you would call this anyways. So we'll build up the walls with some brick and then the back wall is going to be spruce. On these side walls, I have some arches and I plan on filling them with these chiseled bookshelves. So whenever we look at it from the outside, we'll get a bit of a different look. And also I don't have to worry about making the build too big. I can still have this cool double wall without a very large build. Typically, whenever you do an archway, you have to fill it obviously. So your walls just end up being very thick. So this is something just a little bit different. And I think the chiseled bookshelf actually makes a really good building block. Moving on up, let's add some dark oak as a little trim. And then we will have a second story on this library. I want to add a tiny little peak here for the roof. Just the tiniest little peak. And we'll copy that same thing on the back. I've definitely not built anything like this before. So this is a fun first. So far, so good. Now we just need to detail a lot. Detailing is really whenever your builds come to life because right now it does look a little bit weird, I will admit. But of course we're going to trust the process and just add details until it looks good. I want to do the same pillars that we did here on the townhouse over by the library. So we'll do like a little bit of stone brick and then an upside down staircase and then just some brick walls. And I think I'll do that on all of the sides. The difference a little bit of texturing and lanterns do to your build always blows my mind. It looks so much better now. But lastly, of course, we need to add some banners. And of course, just some bushes and sweet berry bushes. Can't forget about those. Whenever I need new sweet berries, I just like go to my little shops and just harvest them. We have sweet berries everywhere around this village. Literally so many sweet berry bushes. It's almost a little tricky to walk around here. I'm constantly getting poked by them, but they're just so cute. I can't help to place them everywhere. Wait, wouldn't it be so cute if we put a bell up there, like a little wee villager bell? I know they're so small, but I still think it could be kind of cute. So we can just go over to this village over here and snag their bell. I'm sure they won't mind. Thank you so much. I'll put it to good use, I promise. Now we just need to bring it down enough so we can see it through the window. Can we see it? Oh, we can! Isn't it so cute? Just a wee little bell. It's so small, but I like it. And with that, another build is done. Day 20 is over and I'll see you all tomorrow for day 21. It is now day 21 and today I plan on filling in this empty space over here by the nether portal. So in a perfect world, I would build a really cool town hall. However, it's not a perfect world and I don't wanna build a massive town hall today. So instead, I think that we'll build like a tiny little information center or a little office or something. You know, whenever you go camping and or like hiking or 
to some kind of national park or something and they have those little offices that you can go to to get information and ask questions and stuff like that. That is kind of the vibe I'm going for. If you remember my garden shop at my base, I'm kind of going to be using that same style. So for the roof, I'm going to have it peek up on every single side of the build. So we'll start with a simple square and then a pillar up on all of the corners. I didn't grab any dark oak, so let me go and grab some. And by the way, the storage building is a game changer. I highly recommend if you're doing some kind of giant project like I am to build yourself a little storage building or it just doesn't have to be an entire building, just an organized area to store all of your building materials because it helps so much and it makes building so much more enjoyable to have all of your things organized. All right, well, let's go ahead and start on this roof. So we will do a bit of a dark oak trim. I really don't know why sometimes I like to build the roof first. I just find it easier to get the entire build in, especially if I know exactly what roof shape I want to do. And in this case, I definitely know exactly what I want to go for. Now you can see exactly what I mean about the roof peaks being on all four sides of the build. I just feel like this creates such a fun roof shape. And now we just need to fill it in with some mangrove planks. that I'm building very simple builds, but I mean, to be fair, the challenge is kind of crazy, but I do think that I have gone a lot faster at building for sure. Like I can finish this entire build in about 30 minutes. Yes, I know that it is only a square, but I do think that I'm getting a bit faster. Definitely not something that I thought would come from the challenge. So I guess that's kind of fun. Anyways, as you can see, we are doing that same alternating spruce and oak wall just to bring in those cabin vibes again. Also, another thing that helps me build a little bit faster is keeping all of my materials stocked up. I always Always have plenty of wood, plenty of stone, lots of decorating bits and such. I've had to go several times to my base. Usually once every three or so days, I go back to my base and just restock up on some wood types and lanterns, really. I have bought so many lanterns from my librarian villagers. Couldn't have done it without them, truly. And also my mason villagers couldn't have done it without them either. That's another thing that will help your building be a little bit more enjoyable. It's just making sure that you have a good source of materials, AKA librarian villagers for lanterns and mason villagers for bricks. That has been one of my priorities in this world is just having lots of farms and it has definitely paid off. Oh, it's finally snowing. Okay, so cool. So now we can get some snow on some of the parts that I have taken the snow off of. Now I'm just thinking of all the little tips that can help you build faster. I don't know if that's anyone's goal whenever it comes to building. Definitely doesn't have to be by any means. So another way that you can build faster if you want to know is just have some little decor ideas and just structural ideas ready to go so you can just recreate them throughout all of your builds. Like my little window boxes, for example, it just is a fast way for me to decorate my windows in my builds. That way I don't have to come up with ideas and think and wonder how am I going to decorate my windows? I already know how I'm going to do it. The build is looking really cute and is definitely coming together. But the last thing that we need to do, of course, is make a cute little hanging sign. These little hanging signs are always so fun for me to do. Look at that one. That one looks so good. I have no idea how it's taken me so long to actually utilize the new hanging signs in Minecraft, but they are so fun. Highly recommend if you aren't already using them. Well, there is our fun little information center finished and the end of day 21. So I'll see you all tomorrow for day 22. 
today I would like to decorate the left side of the island a little bit. Just make it a bit more festive and also make it feel more finished. I'm thinking about decorating the trees around here to make them like Christmas trees and then also placing some little presents around and then also some lamp posts. So let's go ahead and get started. I think first things first, I want to start with the Christmas trees. Also in some empty spaces like this, it might be a good idea to plant a few more trees. Maybe we'll plant one here. Oh, and that will be the perfect Christmas tree as well. Okay, really good. So I'm just going to go through and place little bits of wool around like we did with the big Christmas tree. And then for the top, we'll place a piece of glowstone and then some yellow stained glass around to symbolize the star. This kind of reminds me of Animal Crossing because around Christmas time, some of the pine trees are decorated for Christmas. So it's kind of like that vibe. Maybe we can just add some spruce leaves on the bottom just to kind of shape it, make it look a bit better. But other than that, that tree is done. I think next I want to maybe put one around here, but I don't really like the shape of this tree. So let's go ahead and chop this one down and maybe place a, another Christmas tree around here. Okay, it's a little baby, but we need some variety, so that's okay. Second tree down, I'm just going to continue decorating trees around here. And we have this open space. Honestly, I didn't even realize this giant open space was back here and I don't really have enough time to fill it out. But what I will do is just continue to decorate the trees. I can at least do that. At least I attempted to do something back here. I think before we get any further, I want to finish up some of the pathways that I have neglected to do, like this one over here, and we need to do a pathway going to the storage building, and then also the little information center up at the front. We'll do the storage building first. I'm just gonna have it go up this hill to the town square. I guess if we wanted to be technical, I'm not building anything today, so maybe I'm kind of cheating the challenge a little bit. But to be fair, whenever I started this challenge, I didn't really intend on building an actual build every day. I definitely envisioned doing some smaller things throughout the days just to break it up and make it a little bit easier for myself. And honestly, we've been building pretty much every single day. Throughout this month, I have definitely thought several times, why did I decide to do this challenge? And this has been the worst idea I've ever come up with. I was so excited at the beginning of the month to do this challenge. And it has been so tricky to get myself to build something every single day in Minecraft. Hands down the most building I have ever done. But I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. I am making my way through this challenge and honestly I'm so proud of myself for finishing it because I've definitely considered quitting here and there. So you know that being said, if you haven't already liked this video, left a comment, subscribed, please do because I have spent so much time on this one video. I know exactly how I want to fill this hill area over here. Whenever I have a tricky hill that I don't know how to decorate, I usually just plant flowers or something on it. And in this case for the winter village, I think I'll plant some sweet berry bushes. So it'll be like a little sweet berry patch. So first we'll sprinkle some spruce bushes around. And honestly, I think I'll wrap it all the way around here. Just a really quick and easy way to fill in space, especially in a tricky area. And go around the village and pick lots of sweet berries. And plant them. And once all the sweet berries are grown, this area will look super pretty. Next thing that I'd like to do to add a bit of festive pizzazz is to sprinkle giant presents all around this neighborhood. And I'll go ahead and pop up on screen right here where I got this idea from and how I'm going to be making the bow. 
So full credits to that creator for this idea. We'll just place them upside down quartz staircases on either side of the present and then a quartz slab. And just like that, we have a giant present, which I think fills out this area nicely. I just want to maybe put like a couple more. I don't want to put too many because I don't want this to feel too busy. And then maybe we can put another one right here. Honestly, for now, I think I'll just do those two. And then if I find another space that needs to be filled out a bit more, then I'll just add another one. Lastly, I think I want to build some street lights. So I'm going to place down some chiseled stone bricks to plan out exactly where I want to place them before I start building them and then realize that I don't like the placement or something. So to build them, we'll start with the chiseled stone bricks, of course, a stone brick wall, and then build up with some fences, place another wall, and then a rest stone lamp on top and I want these to be daylight censored so that whenever it turns nighttime they'll turn on. I've never used these before but it sounds like a fun time. We'll place fences on either side, some spruce trap doors, and then last but not least, let's place some little hanging flower pots. And there we go, there's our street light. And once it turns nighttime, it'll light up. And I just love that concept so much for some reason. Now to just build a few more around. Oh my goodness, I did not realize this. But whenever the daylight sensor turns on, a redstone signal gets put out or whatever it does, and it flips the trap doors. Look at them. They get flipped. I didn't even realize that that was going to happen. Well, maybe we do staircases instead, or maybe just slabs. And then they just all flipped back. That is so funny. I know nothing about redstone at all, clearly. I don't like it nearly as much, but like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't just do trap doors unless I want them to be flipped up every night. I think that I can officially say that this neighborhood area is finished. I think it looks so festive and I'm so happy with all of the details that I was able to put into it. We even have this little pathway connecting from the town square over to the information center. And honestly, I think that everything is looking so good. I'm so happy with it. I definitely have a lot more to detail, but honestly, I feel like we're on the detailing phase of this village, which makes me really happy because I've been building so much. So it's nice to take a break and just detail and decorate. I hope that you all had a lovely Christmas Eve Eve if you celebrate or just a lovely December 23rd. But for day 23, I want to build a clock tower. I've never built a clock tower before and I figured here in this winter village would be the perfect opportunity to build one. And I think that I'm going to build it right here. I want you to be able to see it from the town square and this area is feeling pretty empty. So I think this is a good place. I was thinking about building it here and I kind of like this spot better. However, I do think it'll be kind of hidden. So I think this space might be a little bit better. Now, I do think I'm just going to introduce the idea of this build today and then leave you all with a time lapse just because I don't have the time today to commentate this entire build in real time. That's kind of just the beauty of this challenge is some days are just not great recording days and this is one of them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump on into the time lapse. It is now day 24 and also Christmas Eve and I can't believe that we only have two more days including today of this building challenge. So today I would like to kind of work on this side of the village because I don't have any pathways in and I kind of want to add some decorations like I did over there on this side of the village yesterday, day before yesterday. Also where did my trap door go? Why is it not there? 
So I think for step one, we will lay down the pathways and then I kind of want to create a mini square here since we do have a little circle of shops, kind of like we do over here, but I do want this to be the main focal point in the village. the pathways in what if we try to build a little tree right here in the center i definitely want this tree to be smaller than that tree so maybe only like this big or something okay what do we think i mean it's not awful i think once we get the star on top and the ornaments then it'll start to look a lot better whenever i'm adding the ornaments i kind of just step back and see if i'm missing a color somewhere or if one space is looking a little too empty. Like I'm thinking that I need another pink somewhere on this side of the tree. And that already looks a lot better. Honestly, kind of like decorating a real Christmas tree. Now to make the square just a little bit bigger since the tree kind of takes up all of our walking space. What if we add the little corner barriers that we have over there on the main town square just to kind of section it off a little bit and we'll place a lantern on top. I mean, it's something. I think it looks good. I think it definitely fills this area out. Next, while I still have all of the Christmas tree decorating stuff in my inventory, let's just go around and decorate a few more trees. Why is this tree so ugly? Maybe that's a little bit better. It's kind of chonk, but I guess it's fine. The next thing we need to do is add some little lamp posts and I'm just going to use that same design that I used earlier. I love how even whenever it snows the lamp posts turn on. It's not necessarily just at nighttime, it's just whenever the weather is bad they turn on which is so cool. We'll also need to add those giant presents around and I'm thinking about putting one right here because this is a fairly empty spot and we'll do a red one this time. I don't want it to feel too cluttered so like we could put one here for example but I think that would just begin to feel like too much. Maybe one here by the clock tower. That might be a good spot. What color should we make this one? We already have a pink one and a light blue one. Maybe a yellow one? I think yellow was a good choice. So we have yellow, red, blue, and pink. Hmm, I wonder about another one over here. This area is fairly empty. I think that might be a good choice. And we'll make this one lime green. Every single view of this village is beautiful. It's so festive. It looks so good. I think this is probably the best project I've ever done. It's been a while since we've seen the village from the sky. So let's take a peek. Oh my gosh, there's literally so much to this village. It's crazy. And look at all the Christmas trees sprinkled around. That's so cool. I can't believe that tomorrow is going to be the very last day and I have a fun little project planned. Nothing too big. It is Christmas after all. But wow, this looks so, so good. I'm so happy with this. Oh my goodness, I'm actually so happy. Maybe this wasn't the worst idea ever. But with that, I hope that you all had a merry Christmas Eve if you celebrate or a lovely December 24th. And I'll see you all tomorrow for day 25. We have finally reached the very last day of this building challenge. Oh my goodness, I never thought we were gonna make it, but we finally did. And today we are going to be building the very last thing of the challenge. Now there are definitely some empty spots around on the snowy island. And I feel like I could probably build on the island for like another two weeks or something. However, I'm definitely not going to be doing that. And also I'm okay with it having some little forests and stuff. We don't necessarily have to fill every square inch with something, but I think we have done a pretty good job. Anyways, with that being said, I'm not really going to do a proper build today just because I don't think that I can add any one build that's really going to make a huge difference. 
And also, since this is the very last day, I think it's pretty fitting to make a little map wall. And this will be the perfect area for it right over here by the nether portal and also the information center. So we'll build it right here. And once I get this built, then we'll go ahead and actually create the maps. So we'll start with a wall like so and add some little stripped spruce logs on the corners. From here, I want to hang some lanterns on both the front and the back. We'll add a bit of a dark oak trim. And I'm pretty much just going to mirror the same thing on the front and also the back. Cherry buttons for a little bit of detail. Cherry trap doors. And so that we don't just have a blank back, I think that we'll just put some little signs down. I don't know, maybe there's some little information there or something. And then last but not least, we need to get our maps on the wall. Oh yeah, and then I will also kind of encase it in some trapdoors. Honestly, I think that is the cutest little map wall. It is now map time, so we'll start in the center and then just fill in this map the rest of the way. Pretty much the entire island is filled up in two maps. However, just to make the map wall not look super puny, we will go ahead and also go up here and fill in this area, then also fill in that area down there. Now to properly place all the maps. Look how cool. And we can see all of the little Christmas trees around too. The snow does kind of cover up things just a little bit. So we can't really see everything, but we can see the little paths and all the little buildings. And you know, we should probably mark all of the buildings with banners. That'd be super cool. Though since this map is so small and all the builds are really close together, I think it might start to look a little bit too busy if we have all of the building names on this map. So, you know, maybe we won't do that. Oh, and like here is the fox exhibit, but you can barely even tell that it's anything at all because, you know, it's all snow. And there's the flower shop, and again, the roof is just covered in snow, so it's really hard to tell exactly what it is. And that will about do it for day 25. I think this map wall is the last thing that this village was really missing, and I love so much how it turned out. And that's about it. I have successfully built something every day for a month, and now we have this beautiful village to show for it. And I can certainly say that I will never be doing a challenge like this ever again. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. I hope that you all have a lovely, lovely day, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!